Well, hello there, everyone. Sorry, I'm having to work for a few days. I just had an emergency out of town, and I, uh, I, I got a chance to read a ton of this book, at least up to the third section. And it is just an amazing book. There is so much in here. I'm going to have to read this again just to get the full gist. There is so much just compacted into this book. It, it is just... The, the words are just almost indescribable and don't do it justice. Um, so far, we are on holograms. And how holograms play a part in, to the, in this world that we perceive as a physical world. Um, and how holograms, everything is projection. Everything is energy projected into a uh, receptive field. And the energy that projects the receptive, receptive field also accepts the energy from the being projecting the field. Everything's just being projected by our higher selves as well as other beings that aren't here. Um, call them the Elohim. El is a singular God. Elohim, the I am, makes it uh, plural. So in the beginning, Elohim created the, the world. So the gods created everything that we see, taste, touch, and smell everything that we encounter in life spiritually and physically so I don't want to make this a completely uh, I wouldn't call it religious but I wouldn't make it a, a spiritual thing in that aspect I'll, I'll keep these just to the Ascension handbook um, it does also make references to another book called I believe it's the Spirit spiritual or the light body what is light body channeled by Taki Ren that is going to be my next book I'm going to pick up after this there's also I believe a second part to this um, so I think I'm going to pick up the second part to this and what is light body that seems very promising it's very cheap on Amazon it's about 10 bucks free shipping who to thunk it? So um, <clears throat> let's go ahead. We are in section two, the nature of matter, and we are on to holograms. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're if you're familiar with the phenomenon known as the hologram, you know what the image of an object can be. You know that the image of an object can be captured on special film by combining two laser beams one reflected off the object and the other not. These two beams interact and interfere with each other to create a special image on the film. When a laser beam is again passed through the film, a three-dimensional image of the original object appears, floating in thin air, or fat air. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I, joking all the time. However, unlike photographic film images, the holographic film image is nothing like the original object, but looks like sets of concentric circles called interference patterns. And if the laser beam is, stone, is shown through even a fragment of the film, the image still appears, although less clearly. So even if you were to direct the laser beam at part of the picture or the film the whole image would still appear it would just be a little unclear it would just be a little foggy um, to perceive so that's pretty cool that's good to know um, thus the image is dispersed over the entire film there are two aspects here the object's image caught on film and the image that's projected the analogy of the hologram offers some important clues about the nature of reality and how you can work with it. On the one hand, we have the daily, we have the daily reality you experience, the, ex, the explicate projected image pattern. That's in parentheses. 
So the reality, the daily reality you experience, and on the other, we have the blueprint for that reality, the implicit pattern. That is hidden from you. This explains why a subatomic particle can be everywhere at once. Its blueprint is dispersed throughout the implicit pattern. This directly contradicts classical physics, which describes the physical world as a set of discrete local things, all busy interacting in very limited ways. Now we're getting somewhere. Suppose that matter as you know it is made up of subatomic waves projected out to form three-dimensional pattern, three-dimensional wave patterns. This miraculous organ, that miraculous organ, the human brain, detects these projected patterns and constructs what looks, what looks to you like an objective reality from them. And this reality looks real and solid to you because your physical body is also a three-dimensional projected image. Reality is not therefore an, object, an objective out there, but a subjective in here, and is different for everyone. So what does that make you? Are you explicit flesh and bone, anchored in a solid world? Or are you an implicit blur of holographic patterns playing in a vast swirl of large patterns? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Maybe both, implicit and explicit, in here and out there. I think it's both. Um, is it the light shining through the hidden patterns on the film? Or is it the pattern itself? It is both. Oh, there it is, answered the question. It is both. Consciousness both forms the hidden blueprints from even more remote blueprints and shines the light through them to project what you see, feel, and hear. But we're talking about different functions here. Subatomic consciousness creates the building blocks of matter, and other parts of the consciousness organize them in ever more complex patterns. Your cells, physical organs, emotions, and thoughts all of which are fully conscious in their own way. And your consciousness interacts with every other consciousness, be it living or so-called inanimate. Yeah, because even inanimate objects are like, take this piano right in front of me that I'm doing this video on. It is a solid form, but yet at a subatomic level, at a, at a nano level, we're talking about just an unfathomable number of atoms vibrating together to form this thing in the physical world. They're just moving at such a low vibration and high vibration, I guess, to make it look solid that you could stand on it. That's why Christ could walk on water because he just seen vibration. He just seen the energy. He, he was like, he was like Neo looking at the matrix I'm, I'm going to have to go with that analogy. That's the only way to physically describe it that everybody would get it. He's like Neo looking at the Matrix. Uh, Peter was able to see like that for a moment. He stepped out of the boat onto the crashing waves. He took a few steps. And then Christ said, why'd you doubt? And he fell right in. Why'd you doubt? There's something there. There's something there. Maybe we'll have to do a study on that and... <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Maybe we'll have to do a study on that and, and really get into what energy, you know, how everything is comprised of energy. We'll have to do a physics class. Why not? Why not? Um, let's get back to the book. Sorry. I know that this is enough to blow the fuses in anyone's mental body. But it's important to know how fluid reality is in the order is in order to be able to manipulate it. So we have to know how it's com how it's composed in order to manipulate it. So we have to know the functions of it in order to mess around with it. Like Christ knew the functions of it, so he could walk on it. That's me. So 
If you believed that you were somehow fixed in your makeup, you might not give yourself permission to change. For example, you know that you have the tool where to just drop off. I'm so sorry. Um, if you believe that if you believe that you yourself you give yourself permission to change. For example, you know that you have lots of old behavior patterns stored in the cells of your physical body. If these cells were frozen and this old energy was locked in, how could you ever release it? But if your cells are projections from some hidden blueprint, what if you could change the blueprint or how it was projected and have just the tool and you have just the tool to do it? Consciousness. As we'll see later, the human species is on a quest, a reality creation quest. But you've gotten so good at reality creation that you don't know you're doing it anymore. Everything you experience is a direct result of your efforts at reality creation and a faithful projection of the inner blueprints. If you don't know, if you don't know that you're doing this or that you can change the blueprint, you'll keep creating the same old reality. And that's no fun. But things are far more malleable and plastic than you realize. And this is going to prove very important later on. Your emotions and thoughts are part of the inner blueprint, and your daily life is the projected image. Of course, your emotions and thoughts interact with those of everyone else, just as you share your life with everyone else. But what you think and feel play a very large part in what happens to you. Yeah, you think bad things are going to happen to you. Bad things are going to happen to you. You you think that good things are going to happen and you feel that you're protected. You're going to be protected and you're going to have, you know, good things happen to you. It's all about projection. When you are fearful, then, you know, things that are going to make you scared are going to keep happening. It's the uh, cause and effect. It's the laws of cause and effect. Okay, but things are, okay. Reality as you know it is projected from a variety of hologram-like blueprints. The blueprints exist at various levels of removeness. That's even a word, wow. From ordinary reality and the images they project overlap. The lowest frequency images appear solid to your, to your solid body. But what you think of as space is full of higher frequency images, all coexisting. You yourself consist of many projections, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, from the blueprints devised by you as spirit. And these blueprints are in turn projections from higher frequencies, more removed blueprints, What's important here is that you can modify these blueprints through visualization. If you're sick, you can use visualization to repair the blueprint and regain health. If you want to bring about a situation, you can design a blueprint and sit back as it is projected into the physical plane as events that you then experience. Reality creation works both ways. However, if you're in a situation you don't like, yet are resisting it rather than visualizing something else, you are reinforcing both the blueprint and the projection mechanism, thus perpetuating the unwanted situation. So consciousness is the pattern behind objective reality and everything in the history of planet Earth and consciousness lies deep within the fabric of reality. Any of you who follow the TV series Star Trek The Next Generation have an excellent model for reality creation. The holodeck on the Enterprise is able to generate images of objects and people which operate within the parameters specified by the person programming the reality. 
A subtle change in the program can cause a change in, say, a holographic character's aggression level, or defuse a threatening situation. Unlike today's holograms, however, a holographic bullet will kill you, and a holographic monster can devour you, unless you stop the program first. The TV series is set in the 24th century, but the technology to sculpt energy in this way will be available long before then. This guy's got some high hopes for technology. Holy crap. This brings us to how the physical plane is actually formed. A holographic image is formed by light being held in an envelope that is a representation of the original. All the information needed to generate the image is encoded in the film. The envelope is actually kind of standing wave. Sorry about that. Um, like I said, I had an emergency with my aunt's house and it's flooding in Santa Monica. It's supposed to, it's been flooding in here for two days now and it is supposed to rain for another three days. So I am here to keep everything dry. I'm sitting here with a shop vac, sucking up water as it comes in. We just put a concrete gutter around the house, put in rain gutters. We just spent like 10 grand. I redid the floors. We used to have wood floors in here. If uh, Here, why not? I'll show you. It's a complete mess in our rental right now. It's We have a lady that's renting it, but she had to put all of her stuff up, and it's crazy, but I just replaced this floor. It used to be a wood floor of the same, co of the same color, tongue and groove, and so when it was uh, another $3,500 to replace the wood flooring, I said, why don't we just put in linoleum? It's, a nas it's some nasty stuff. I hate doing linoleum. It's all glue, and uh, it's not the kind that has the sticky back. No, it can't be that easy. But, uh, so yeah, yeah, I spent two days putting this floor in and redoing the baseboard and uh, toe kicks on the cabinets and resetting the cabinets. It's been one pain in the ass. I just did this three weeks ago, and it's flooding again even with a concrete gutter around the house. We dug down and waterproofed the foundation, but the foundation is so shallow, it's only about 15 inches deep. It should, you know, most foundations are three feet. It's just crazy, crazy. I don't know what we're gonna do, but uh, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling now. Let's, uh, let's get back to the book. So we covered holograms. Um, I do have a few things highlighted in holograms. Reality is not, therefore, an objective out there, but a subjective in here, and is different for everyone. That, uh, it, it is definitely different for everyone. Everybody's experience here on this earth is totally different. We have every walk of life experiencing different things at different times. Um, Consciousness both forms the hidden blueprints from even more remote blueprints and shines the light through them to project what you see, feel, and hear. Sounds good. It's important to know how fluid reality is in order to be able to manipulate it. That I found that very important. Very important. Just that I highlighted just that one sentence it is consciousness uh, so we got to figure out how all this energy works how we project it and how we need to go about manipulating it to make our lives better we don't want to live in the same continuous repetitive disaster over and over and over again I uh, received a word from the father about um, projection and just if you think that bad shit's going to happen to you all the time then that's what's going to happen to you you have to always be positive don't ever let don't ever let yourself stay in a negative place just deal with things as they come and move on 
there is, uh, there's nothing worth dwelling on in this world. Nothing. Not a thing. All, everything in this world will pass. The only thing that's going to be left is the energy because energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed. So you, when we die, we shed this body and our energy is transformed. Seems reasonable. That's just a law of physics. But let's keep going. What you think and feel play a very large part in what happens to you. Just like I was just saying. What you think of as space is full of higher frequency images, all coexisting. You yourself consist of many projections, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, from blueprints devised by you. So project your reality and project it wisely. By you as a spirit. Sorry, I and notice that I highlighted one more part of that. So consciousness is the pattern behind objective reality and everything in the history of the planet Earth and consciousness lies deep within the fabric of reality. I just wanted to uh, highlight that one, that yeah, consciousness is behind everything. Everything. Um... So how the physical plane is actually formed. A holographic image is formed by light being held in an envelope that is a representation of the original. So is God sitting up there? Is the Elohim sitting up there with like a crystal ball and a flashlight? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist totally. Um... So we will move on to uh, standing waves here in a minute. I'll just break up the videos for you. That way they're not too long. And um, yeah, standing waves is next. It's going to be a really interesting part. I've read up to section three. I, don't, I think I stopped at section three just because uh, I was done traveling at that point. But um, yeah, yeah, we'll get into standing waves next. You guys have a blessed day. Enjoy yourselves. Remember to project your reality and the reality that you want to see. Don't stay in the negative. Everything is being played off of your emotional state, your mental state, your physical state. If you feel that you're going to be sick and you tell yourself you're going to be sick, oh, I can't be around you. I can't be around you. You're going to get me sick. You just put that out there into the universe that that person is going to get you sick. So now those germs are really traveling your way. That energy is flocking to you. So I, I, I don't get shots. So just using this as, as an analogy, I don't get shots, but I don't walk around saying, oh, no, stay away from me. You're going to get me sick. I just go about my normal day. I know that I am healthy and I am ready to roll anytime. I never get sick. And that's what I keep saying. I never get sick. I'm going to be fine. I don't need to worry about anything. But yeah, enough of my ramblings. You guys have a blessed day. Remember, peace be upon you.